Hi, my name is Helen and welcome back to my channel. Today I have another spooky season recommendation video for you. I will of course put the um, book covers over here and then they'll all be listed down in the description box below. I'm going to try to make this a little shorter, more concise, so I'm not going to talk a whole lot about each book. Um, there are actually a few of them that are series. This recommendation is Monster Romances, Monster Lovers. Um, I think on Twitter it's called like Monster Fucking. That's like the general term. Just, you know, monster things. I was going back and I was trying to pick books I had read in like the last year. And there are not as many of them as I thought there were because most of the books I consider that I've read that are like monster ish books are actually just like your run of the mill vampire werewolf and I see those as more paranormal I guess because the market's so oversaturated with those kind of things um and then I read a lot of like alien stuff mostly like Ruby Dixon uh, I used to read a lot of Evangeline Anderson and I guess those could be considered monstrous but not truly like I don't really see those as truly monsters but I did scrounge a few things together um, and the first is a book series I've talked about a couple of times before so I'm just gonna like quickly mention it and then move on and that's the Naga Brides series by Naomi Lucas and um, they're the Naga they're snake people I'll put the um, limited edition covers up because the artwork for those is gorgeous uh those I think are up until the end of this year so if you're interested in those books I would get those covers they're absolutely beautiful um but those books uh the first three cover one arc and then the fourth book starts a second arc in the series um they're kind of like sci-fi and fantasy um dystopian humans had left earth and then they come back and when they come back they find these snake people there um and in the first book the snake men demand the human women be given to them in exchange for the technology the humans came for and it kind of goes from there um the second suggestion i have is the half orcs maiden bride by ruby dixon um this is cute it's in it's one of the first i think it is the first orc book i ever really really read um and i love ruby dixon and so when this came out i like jumped on it it's in her aspect and anchor series but it's not connected to the other books in those series um very i mean it's connected very loosely it's the same world but the characters aren't um crossovers or anything in any of the other books in that series um, this was cute. It was sweet. Iolanthe is a tall, um, handsome woman. She's, you know, tall, big. She's the last of her sisters to get married, and her father kind of sells her into marriage to this half-orc, thus the half-orc's maiden bride. It's cute. It's sweet. Um, I really liked it. It's a quick read, and I recommend that one. And also by Ruby Dixon is Bad Guy, Worst Guy, and then I think, oh, it's Willa's something. It's Willa's book in the Ice Home series, but they're all based around the clone of the same guy, and he's pretty monstrous. Um, you get a really good feel for that in Bad Guy. Um, Worst Guy is kind of like a continuation of that with a different clone, and then I think it's Willa's something. Anyway, um, that also, he is a the same clone and they're monsters. So if you like Ruby Dixon, I suggest those. Those, of course, are more fantasy. They're lighthearted. They're not like really spooky romance romances. And the same with the next one, and that is the Cambric Creek series by C.M. Nascosta. And I have read Morning Glory Milking Farm and Sweetberries. And Morning Glory Milking Farm is about minotaurs. Um, and it's an interesting take because you have this human woman who goes to work at this factory where they milk minotaurs because minotaur sperm in this world is used as kind of like a Viagra. 
and she starts up a relationship with one of her Minotaur clients and um he's like fully like he is he's a minotaur he has the cow head he has hooves it is um you know there's a little bit of a size difference it is quite quite an interesting read but it, again this one's short and sweet it's a you know it's a monster book but it's it's a sweet one um, and then the other one is Sweet Berries, and this is about a mothman and a woman who works at a berry farm, and she actually had been in a relationship with the Minotaur and now, you know, wasn't. She didn't really know that she wanted to be in a relationship with any of the, um, fey creature type things in this world. And so when she meets the mothman kind of by accident one night, he comes to her window and she's, um, you know, giving herself a little self-love, you know, flipping the bean, so to speak, and he kind of helps her with his very long tongue. Um, <laughs> it, it's just a fantastically uh, cute book. I didn't rate it very highly. I didn't personally enjoy it. I felt like it meandered, but the sex and the anatomy of a mothman, that was the most you have to read it. You just, you have to read it to even understand. Like, A Mothman is not something I ever thought I'd read, but I, I'm glad that I have had that experience. Uh, I don't know that it's a, a repeat one, but it was a very enjoyable, entertaining one the first time around. And then next I have a couple of Grace Draven recommendation, recommendations, suggestions. The first one is Entreat Me, and this is like a Beauty and the Beast retelling with a lot of really fun uh, personal touches by Grace Draven. I liked this a lot. The um, main love interest, he is very monstrous in appearance to the point he doesn't even think that uh, Louvain, the uh, main character, uh, he doesn't really think think any woman would be attracted to him. It kind of surprises him when she is. Um, he's kind of turning more into the forest. He has like dark um, tattoo things that move under his skin. His skin's kind of turning to bark a little bit. Um, and he turns into like a full-fledged monster uh, when the flux comes. And that's, you know, explained in the book. But, you know, it's a cute Beauty and the Beast retelling. And I thought, what better to put on this list than a, uh, you know, a beastly story, you know, Beauty and the Beast monster. And this is probably the best version of a Beauty and the Beast retelling I have ever read because he truly is like beastly looking. Um, and then the other two by Grace Draven are Radiance and Eidolone. And uh, the main love interest in both of these, Brishan is a Kai. And the Kai are not human. They have gray skin. They have fully yellow eyes. Um, I think they're kind of like described as like owlish because they have no pupil. They're like fully 100% yellow. They have very sharp teeth. They have long sharp claws. Their um, bones are denser than humans. They're much heavier and bigger and weightier than humans. Um, and in the first book, Ildico is human and she and Brishan are married in like an alliance trade between their two kingdoms um and they think each other is pretty dang ugly um and so yes th this is definitely a monstrous re recommendation even though again it's a very sweet friends to lovers situation and the next is the dragon's bride by katie robert and in the um demon's bargain series or in general i think it's a, a deal with the demon each one of these books is going to be about a different kind of monster creature with a human woman and they have these gorgeous clinch covers. There are three out. I have read two of them. Um, there's one with a kraken uh, that, you know, tentacle things. There's the, the, um, the dragon's bride. He's like a full dragon. Like you can see this. I recommend you look up on Twitter some of the NS... FW fan art because Soul the dragon has two dicks um and it's interesting it's an interesting thing I I liked it um again he's fully a dragon you can see here there's nothing really humanoid humanoid about him 
Um, and then the third one is um, The Demon's Bargain. And he, the main love interest in this one is a gargoyle. He's half, or they are half gargoyle and half bargain or demon. Um, then I have The Kraken by Tiffany Roberts. And Tiffany Roberts is a wife and husband writing duo. They've written a lot of monster books, but I've only read the Kraken books. I actually have the uh, spiders, the spider ones on my to read list. Hopefully I will get to them by the beginning of next year. I'm really interested in Tiffany Roberts books. Their books look so like interesting and weird and like I read the Kraken books and I liked them but like it just got to the point it was they were how many Kraken books can you read and that was a couple of years ago Krakens are not I, tentacle porn was tentacle smut in general I did not think was my thing I have come around to the idea of it I really want to go back and revisit these maybe at some point um but I think that's a good place to start. I don't really know what Tiffany Roberts' first books were, but I liked these ones because they kind of, I feel like they're very reader friendly, even though the main love interests in these books are Krekens. It's just, it's interesting, but also the story in and of itself isn't super weird. Like a lot with these monster books, you have storylines that feel like there's so much going on. Whereas with the, the Tiffany Roberts, the Kraken books, they're, they're not so much like that. It's very kind of sweet, low angst, low um, stakes I'm, in a lot of ways. And I know some of the storylines aren't really, but there's just not a lot of tension and they're quick, easy, good reads. And lastly, uh, I have the Immortals After Dark series by Cressley Cole, specifically Sweet Ruin and Wicked Abyss. Um, Wicked Abyss is about the primordial demon. And so the primordial in this series is the oldest or the original of each race. And so Abyssian is the um, oldest now living demon. Um, I believe his father and his mother were the, the forebearers of demons, the makers of demons in general. I, I, I believe I understood that from the book. And he is very monstrous, like probably the most monstrous looking out of all of Cressley Cole's heroes in this series because like he looks like truly the devil from like Christian I guess mythology like you know red horns red body like very muscular he has lots and lots of piercings I think like tattoos um and those penis piercings or I, that was an interesting that was interesting I liked it um so very monstrous. I think these two were like the best books in this series and that's just my opinion. Um, I like the books about the werewolves and the vampires and the Valkyries, don't get me wrong, but this was such a unique take and these, th this demon actually felt demonic to me and I did not feel that way with any of the other demons in this series besides maybe Slade, but even he wasn't quite as far as Abyssian is. Um, especially since Lila, in, in comparison, she is like a fey princess. And so, you know, she's like this delicate, beautiful little, you know, creature in comparison. It really felt like a Beauty and the Beast type situation because he keeps her captive and he makes her clean things. Um, and it's just, you know, I felt I truly felt like this was a monster fucking book. Um, and I don't think you have to read the other books in this series to read this book. For the most part with the Immortals After Dark series, I feel like after you get to Lothair, 
you really don't have to read them in order and I really don't feel like you need to you, you have to read them in order anyway yeah sure you understand some of the greater points of this story but I skipped around a lot and I understood everything just fine and then the other one is Sweet Ruin and I recommend this one simply for the fact that Joe the main character love interest in this book is a vampire or she's part phantom part vampire and what is more spooky and monstrous than a phantom vampire and her love interest Ru rune she calls him ruin but his name is rune he is a dark fae which means his blood is poisonous his saliva is poisonous his sperm is poisonous any of his fluids are poisonous except to joe and i just i have to say this like kind of gave me some callbacks to um what was it uh the first book in this series with the female vampire emma uh, anyway, with the bloody vampire blowjob that I just died for, that was something else. Uh, and again, this book felt very, like, kind of atmospherically dark and creepy in comparison to the rest of the books in this series. That's why I really feel like these two books stand out as, like, such strong additions, even though they're so far into the series and really feel like true monster books in comparison to the rest that feel like, oh yeah, they're big, you know, bad immortal people that don't follow normal human rules, except they look like humans, they just look like super gorgeous, you know, um, versions of humans. And at least with Wicked Abyss, Abyssian is demonic. He He's not going to fit in with humans. He's not attractive, which, you know, he thinks is a shame because he thought he was pretty dang attractive beforehand. And, you know, with Sweet Ruin, Joe is, she's, she's a vampire. And again, what's creepier than a phantom vampire who likes to just walk into people's bodies and possess them for fun? I mean, I, I just think that's kind of creepy and spooky and like the idea of anytime you get a shiver like what if there's a vampire possessing me I really liked that um but that is my video I might have another spooky recommendation I kind of have a couple more ideas in this vein for October leading up to spooky season I hope you liked this video if you did please like and subscribe maybe comment down below with you know um, what your favorite monster loving romance book is, um, if this is a trope you like, um, if you've read any that are like actually kind of scary and creepy, I don't think I have. Like most of the ones on this list are pretty like cutesy, like sweet in my opinion. And that's always weird for a monster book for me, but I haven't read a lot of that kind of a thing. So if you have any recommendations, you know, you can uh, feel free to, you know, give them. Um, my email is in my, is in the description box below if you want to send me an email with suggestions or anything of that nature. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a good day. Bye.